we've been building up all of the definitions for natural numbers from scratch by ourselves uh, in the same way that the standard library does in order to get an understanding of some of Cox's basic features, as well as an understanding of how natural numbers are in fact handled in the standard library. Now we've defined plus and minus and so forth, but it turns out even equality itself is something that we can define from scratch here. So I'm gonna define a function for equality on two natural numbers, n and m, and that's gonna return a bool, true or false, to indicate whether n is equal to m. Once more, we're gonna define this ourselves because there is no primitive way we can compute this. Uh, we don't have integers that are built into chips, for example, your, your, your CPU. Instead, what we have are our own coded up representation of natural numbers in unary. So we'll have to do this with pattern matching. Um, how do we know whether n is equal to m? Well, we could start off and say, is n zero or is n the successor of something else? If n is zero, then we need to check m. If m is also zero, we can return true. Otherwise, m must be something else. It's the successor of some other natural number, which means it's at least one, maybe two, maybe three, but at least one. And so it can't be equal to zero. Therefore, we should return false. So that finishes off that case where n, the first argument was zero. What about the case where the second argument, m, was the, sorry, where the first argument, n, rather, was the successor of something else, n prime? Well, again, we'll need to check the second argument, m. If the second argument is zero, uh, well, we're in the same case as we just reasoned about up here, where we've got one of them being zero, the other non-zero, so we can return false. Otherwise, we now have the knowledge that we're comparing two natural numbers, n and m. They both have a successor constructor out front, so we can kind of cancel out that constructor, if you will, and then just recurse into figuring out whether the data carried inside of that constructor is equal. So we recurse and call eek b on n prime and m prime. Okay, so that's our definition of equality on the booleans then, eek b. If you want to define less than or equal to, you could do that as well in the same way. So let's just define whether n is less than or equal to m. As we'll return a Boolean, true or false, as the result here. Again, let's, let's walk through the logic. Suppose that n is zero. Well, zero is less than all other, or less than or equal to all other natural numbers, right? Because there are no negatives in the natural numbers. So that's always going to be true. On the other hand, if n is at least one and maybe bigger, so it's the successor of some other natural number n prime. Now we're gonna need to check the second argument. If the second argument is zero, then we're comparing something that's bigger than zero to zero. And of course, that's not less than or equal to then, right? Maybe we've got like, is 10 less than or equal to zero is what we're checking here. Of course it's not, so we'll return false. Otherwise, we're in the case where we have a successor in front of each of those. We can cancel that out, recurse, and check whether n prime is less than or equal to m prime. So that's our less than or equal to function that returns a Boolean. That's why we named it LEB. Okay, so we could do a little checking here to see whether we got that definition right. Some examples here of whether two is less than two, two is less than four or so forth. All of these go through simply with uh, just reflexivity as the main tactic that we use to prove it. Of course, these are important notions, these relations of equal and less than or equal to that return a Boolean. So let's give them an infix notation instead of having to always write it as a function. Uh, and in fact, we'll write it with the notation you might expect, equals or less than or equal to, uh, except for we're going to put a question mark after it here uh, to indicate that uh, we're testing it with, like with a function that computes something and returning a Boolean. Uh, this is what the standard library does as well, so we're being consistent with its naming choice there. So equal question mark is eek b, less than equal question mark is leb. Okay, so now we could redo some of those unit tests or do some new ones uh, using that a little bit cleaner notation of that infix uh, comparison. Okay, so why did we end up having to have like this question mark after it here? I, I mentioned it was a standard naming convention. Um, it's because we actually have two notions of equality in Coq. This is something that we'll dive into much later on in detail. Let me just handle it gently right now and mention that there are two notions of equality that we've now seen, the equals operator and the equals question mark operator. For now, the way I would suggest thinking about that is that when you write equals, you're making a logical claim. 
something that you could try to prove. Right? For example, up here in this unit test, uh, we're saying four less than equal to two equals false. Of course, this expression on the left-hand side is going to evaluate to a Boolean, either true or false. And now we're asking, is it going to be the same as the thing on the right-hand side, that value false? That is something you can try to prove in Calc. So when we write equals there, we're actually saying, this is something I'm going to try to prove uh, with a proof block or a proof script like this using tactics. When I write the version of it, though, with a question mark, I'm indicating something that is not about proof per se, but is about computation. Uh, in this case, let's find a, a, an example of it. Um, well, I guess we didn't use equals less than up here, but uh, we could have done something like uh, for equals to question mark equals false. That would also hold as well, right? Okay. So this on the left-hand side with equals question mark is an expression that Cock is going to compute. We're not going to try to prove on this left-hand side that 4 equals 2. We're actually just interested in what it reduces to, what value it computes to, and then doing a proof after that. So there you are. We have two notions of equality. This is something that can sometimes trip up beginners at first, so it might be worthwhile to take just a moment to... Uh, study this, remind yourself, okay, I want to use equals when I'm trying to do a proof. I want to use equals question mark when I want to do a computation on these uh, natural numbers. Uh, indeed, we'll see later on that there are notions of equals question mark for other data types as well. Um, and much later on, we'll see that there are deeper links between these notions, between proofs and programs and computation that is going on with them. Uh, but for now, let's leave it at that uh, and just remind ourselves to use the right version of equality where we need it.